Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I have this little guy on the table. This is the uh, Real Steel Knives, um, the hell are you called? Metamorph G5 V2, yeah, G5 Metamorph. Um, this is a weird little knife, um, and actually this came about, uh, let me give a little bit of background as I'm taking this guy apart. Um, first off though, just checking things, centering, slightly favoring the lock side, not too bad. Uh, is there blade play? Yes, there is blade play. Let's see if we can fix that. So, uh, background story. Uh, uh, this guy is a real steel knife. Um, I've had real steel on my channel a couple of times. Honestly, they've not really impressed me. I'd gotten a couple that were nice enough, but I had some real turds from them, too. And, you know, I recently released a review of, uh, oh, one of them or another. The Metamorph. Uh, not the Metamorph. That's what I have on my table right now. The Megalodon. Um, and uh, it was not a positive review because it wasn't a, you know, I had a really stupid problem. Couldn't be disassembled. Had some issues. I actually got an email from Real Steel, um, somebody or another from Real Steel, probably their marketing team, but whatever, saying, you know, hey, Nick, we're really sorry that you, whoa, those are needle bearings. Heh. <laughs> Okay, wasn't expecting that. Um, to, to, to finish the story right quick, though, um, I got an email from Real Steel saying, you know, hey, Nick, we're sorry you didn't like that knife uh, or that yours had that problem, I think more specifically is what they said. Um, we'd like to send you one that doesn't have that problem so you can get a better sense of what's going on there. And, you know, they were apparently out of stock of the, 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 the these guys, but I asked, you know, hey, is the Metamorph still around? Because my buddy uh, Keith at one point in time said, you know, hey, Nick, you should check one of these guys out, and uh, indeed, uh, I'm doing that now. So, but anyways, they offered to send one of these guys along, but that was a really classy response, and so that's how this guy ended up on my table. I say both his full disclosure, and then just uh, because it's mildly interesting. Uh, now, okay, here's the big question. The question that will haunt me for the rest of my ages is, um, did I just lose a pin? I'm using a flashlight right here to uh, make sure that I don't have a pin sitting on the floor here somewhere. It would be problematic for me. I don't think I did. So the reason I asked this question at all is precisely uh, right here. So we've got here this little backspacer. And this little backspacer... Do I have things backwards here? What am I doing? So that goes there. That's your lanyard pin. Could this just be a positioning pin for something? No, because it looks like there should be another thing that goes right in here to match this. And similarly, there should be one in the back there. But maybe they didn't include those. Ay, ay, ay. I'm going to have to watch the video after this and uh, see whether there was one missing. Just double checking underneath my mat here. Usually that's not the case. And I don't recall anything going flying. So maybe it's the case that there really just weren't all those additional pins in there or something like that. No, I'm an idiot. I am a complete and total idiot. That's where the two screws go. Oh, my God, guys. I need to... It's getting to be a little time. I didn't put me out the freaking pasture at this point. Okay. So my problem here is there is a pin that goes into here, but this hole and this hole are for the damn screws. And those are right there. So, anyways, back at the ranch. Needle bearings. Now, this is actually the very first knife I've had on my channel featuring what are called needle bearings. That's these little guys right here. Um, let me grab some bows here and 91% uh, isopropyl. Uh, and let me, uh, you know, show you off, clean these guys off and show you what we got going on here. These little bearings are uh, very, very... I won't say unusual. They're not super uncommon in the industrial world. But they're not super common in the knife world. These are bearings that, instead of featuring little balls that spin around, feature these little tiny rods. And these rods roll. And so as the blade is rolling, the, 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 it's rolling on top of these rods. And these have the advantage of uh, not only are they, you know, small rolling metal objects, which is just what you want your bearings to be, um, but more importantly, they are uh, they, they're longer than just balls. Because balls, I mean, if you think about it, at the end of the day, have a contact surface that's just the very tip of the ball, right? Uh, whereas these guys have a contact surface against the blade and against the liner that is much larger, that it looks like, uh, well, a, a ball or a, a little cylinder. And that means that the blade just has a lot more lateral support to it. Um, is that going to be a big problem for this particular small aluminum handled everyday carry knife? No, probably not. But at the same time, uh, you know, one could see a world in which, uh, okay. So uh, this just fell out of the other side here. 
this little washer here, this little plastic washer, fell out of the outside of this knife. And that's a hack, by the way. Um, that is what you can do to uh, prevent your knife, basically, from... If your screws are too long, such that the knife won't close up well, then, uh, with the screw at full tension, you add one of those spaces in there, such that the screw effectively becomes a little shorter. So I need to remember to put that back in when I put in the pivot screw. So I'll put that up there with the pivot screw. Oh, let's see here. Um, but anyways, the needle bearings are a nice and interesting approach. Um, so, cool. All right, uh, clean this off here. Still can't believe I spent so long looking for the damn screws for the knife. <laughs> uh, not a brilliant man, that's for damn sure. Ah, oh, man. All right, so now I need to pop out the pivot. This is covered in some kind of nasty gunkit, dude. Some grease or another. Not amazing. But certainly a possibility. Sorry about the cut on my hand there. I handle knives so very, very often doing what I do here on this channel. And then what cuts me open is the chop corner of a sink faucet. Nice. All right. So, uh, let's try and get this bearing out of here. It's held in place by some kind of unholy gunk. Well, actually, it could be holy gunk. I don't know. Maybe they blessed it ahead of time. I don't know. I don't think San Renmu does blessings. Maybe they do. Maybe it's San as in Saint Renmu is the name of the company. I have no evidence to believe that a Chinese knife-making company would use the Spanish word for saint in their name, but in the same way that we have San Diego, why can't we have San Renmu? In which case, he would bless the gunk inside the knife, and, you know, you would end up with a, a holy action. We'll see if by the end of this, once I clean out the gunk, the action becomes holy. Certainly the uh, line is R. Uh, uh, okay. So, uh, anyways, uh, the, 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 the exploits of San Renmo aside, uh, we can continue with this disassembly. The screws are going straight into what appears to be aluminum on the back side there. Not something I super love. But, as I recall, this knife isn't super expensive. I haven't looked at the price yet, because that's something I try to do only during the review process. Just such that I, uh, you know, can kind of formulate my own opinion about what the price should be. And then figure out what the price actually is. Give these one more cleaning here. Needle bearings. Neat. I don't know of any other... Well, that's not true. Shirogorov does them, the metamorph... Or, uh, Megalodon apparently had him. Couldn't tell because the thing was locked freaking shut. But still, uh, here we are. Beautiful. All right, pop that in. Now, let's try and find 15 pins that don't exist, and then we'll take it from there. Looking with a flashlight under my desk for the freaking screws. Oh, guys. Okay, so, Buck 50 says this goes here because that's your lanyard loop. Uh, then there's this little pin that lands here. That's good. This goes right here. Now I need, that's one downside to this approach, is that I'm going to need to keep this backspacer in position to basically be able to spear this, this, um, these screws through the other side. Not Stella there. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and just put in the pivot here. Go ahead and use... Um, come on now, get through there. And it's trying to disassemble itself. You know, I've had, uh, some of the real steels I've had in the past, disassembly has been a major issue for them. It's like they're put together in such a way that it cleverly masks tolerance issues. I'm hoping that's not going to be the case here, but that wouldn't, you know, if we're going to have a problem, my bet is that's where it's going to end up. Uh, okay. No, this spot doesn't go on this side. This part goes on this side because you can see here that the D-shape on this guy, the little milled off portion there, uh, it needs to engage with this far side, not the, the, the near side. And so we have the, un the, the blank side of the screw is on this side. And then, so that means we're rebuilding this knife from the bottom up. That means we are going to put this... No, that needs to go on this side. So this little plastic washer here I was pointing out, needs to go around the pivot screw because it's too small to go around the uh, the other side. 
which narrows some things down a little bit for us at least. That's good. And this needs to go outside the knife, by the way. Uh, it can't go right up against needle bearings because everything's going to suck then. So don't do that. Okay. So let's go ahead and put this in here. Down, 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 down we go. Uh, next step here is going to be to... Ah, crap. Actually, no, this is going to work out okay. I'm going to go ahead and put this... <coughs> this middle screw can go through the middle. A little bit of blue Loctite. Ever curious about the tools I'm using for my disassemblies? Go on ahead and check out my... Uh, uh, I have a disassembly toolkit video. That's what I was about to uh, plug there. Uh, in which I describe all of the various tools, compounds, substances, and otherwise that are involved in my disassembly process. But anyways, um, yeah, so there's that. Actually, this makes things maybe a little easier because now what I can do is pop this... I'll drop this into position here. Yeah, but there's that. And then I'll put the stop pin in place. Then what I should just be able to do is rebuild everything and then just set the lock side onto it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and use some 10-weight nano oil here. And um, go ahead and that's a little Exxon Shabazzi, but hey, why not, right? Spin, 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 spin to distribute lubrication. I already lubed the pivot, so we're good there. Now I'm going to set this down on top of this. Boom. There we go. Now I'm going to apply oil to the detent ball path right there. Now I'm going to apply some oil to the area where the roller bearings will... Uh, not roller bearing. Well, I guess those are also roller bearings, needle bearings, whatevs. Okay, now what's left for us? We must... We must... We must... It's a great deontologist statement. Okay, so uh, D-shaped side of the pivot goes down, so we may need to adjust things such that that becomes true. Okay, I'm going to lift up the... There we go. So I've lifted up the line of lock in there. That's going to make things a little easier. Now my next step here, being very careful, is actually going to be to apply a little bit of Loctite. I'm holding some pressure down on this, but I'm going to apply a little Loctite to my pivot here. Sounds wrong. Come on. Did I just lose my damn plastic thing? No, okay. Yeah, the plastic thing's a kind of a hack. What we're going to say about that is this had better be a pretty inexpensive knife. I generally, you know, look, at some level, does it actually matter? No, not super much. Oh, God damn it, it fell off. But eh, it's also something I'd really just rather see makers just doing right, like using the right length of screws and whatnot, rather than having to shim them. But at another level, I can see it being somewhat ecologically friendly if you, you know, make a pot that's out of spec and you want to hack it together. I don't know. I, I don't... All I do know is I'm not a huge fan of that approach. Okay, so now that's just... that That's down there. That way I can come to the other side here and then start re start screwing, so to speak. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and screw this back guy in here. And tighten, tighten, tighten. That's way too tight in the behind the front there, but that's okay. I don't care. We'll tighten in the back here. And now we'll come back to this other side. Tighten up. Let's see here. That's better. No play. Centering is dead on. Let's see if I can loosen it up just a smidge more. That was a smidge right there. You see it? Ah. This is really hard to do because, like, the, the natural height of this is not so far away from the camera height. So front flipping this guy under here is not straightforward. Okay. Beautiful. Yeah, we're all set now. Well, that's good. Um, Centering is actually now fixed. Uh, the action is... Substantially smoother. Still a little loud, but hey, whatever. Uh, and we are now affect affectionately, officially, wow, <laughs> we are affectionately good to go. I really like being good to go. Uh, but the knife is now disassembled and maintained. There you go. Hope this has been interesting to you that um, the, the, the free price of this disassembly was a real steal for you. And that you have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful 
Uh, rest of your day, keep an eye out for see if this guy metamorphoses into a beautiful review uh, before your very eyes. Bye now.